Hey guys, now that I had a good bit of money on my hands, I either had a choice of buying more parts to flip or to treat myself. Eh, but about that. There had been a drought of deals due to the knock-on effects of Corona, and those Blue Moon listings I saw were snatched before I could, so a long time had passed. Until this motherboard appeared. This is an MSI B450i Gaming Plus AC, a personal dream board of mine for one being ITX and two having a solid VRM configuration. Yes, it's also an AM4 platform. Listed for a few days at £90, I pondered the visibility of a Ryzen system. I'll still need DDR4 RAM and CPU. But out of sheer boredom and frustration, the trigger was pulled and let the games begin. For me, I knew moving on to Ryzen was inevitable. Even though I could upgrade my 2500K to an i7, I craved a more significant upgrade, meaning there's still room for a 3900X and, well, Ryzen 4th gen as well. Next was RAM. This one, I thought to myself, would be difficult. 8GB of DDR4 are available for cheap, but after experiencing 16GB, I could never go back. Uh, it's as if the moon turned blue for me though as someone posted a bundle, graphics card and stuff like that, that included 16 gigabytes of crucial ballistics. The next day too. After asking just for the sticks and almost missing out, I got them for £45. Zen architecture scales with fast RAM, so this 3200MHz CL16 kit was a nice find. Not Samsung B die, but Micron E die instead for at least some overclocking headroom. And then came the last dread a Ryzen CPU. Marketplace showed little to no hope, and eBay was just being eBay. So, feeling like it's gonna be a long time, I looked in Gumtree and, uh. Well, what do you know? A Ryzen 5 2600X for £85 appeared. I asked for 80. Buying used processors can be a bit risky. Ryzen scams exist after all. There are QR codes in both the box and CPU, so scanning them can determine their authenticity. If not, I'd either be asking questions or demand a way to prove that it's the real thing. Now that we have the parts, let's build. Installing on a PJ interface is at first scary, but is quite refreshing for a change while everything else is fairly straightforward. Let's put this tiny system into an E80X case. <laughs> oh, the size disparity hurts, but at least it's temporary. Everything is temporary. Ah, well, isn't this beautiful? Anyways, the system... <laughs> Anyways, the system service exception code points to bad drivers amongst other things, and it tells us which one. ASIO.sys, a component of ASUS chipset drivers. A fresh install would have been the best solution, but... Nah, let's just boot into safe mode, uninstall them drivers, and mangle a few things up. So yeah, how much of an upgrade is this from my i5-2500K? I've done some basic gaming and productivity benchmarks, as well as throwing in some other CPUs. All of them are paired with an RX 570, uh, overclocked, 16GB of RAM, and on Windows 10, build 2004. Cinebench R20 is pretty simple. The scores are linear, so the 2600X is almost three times faster than an i5-3470 and 2500K at stock speeds. 3D Mark Time Spy also shows similar trend in CPU scores, though overall scores point to a GPU bottleneck. Speaking of which, Shadow of the Tomb Raider has a built-in benchmark that shows how GPU bound we are. And yeah, we see the full spectrum right here. Another game is Destiny 2. Now, this one's difficult to benchmark because MSI Afterburner 
doesn't work, so this chart isn't taken as seriously. Despite frame rates being within margin of error, bear in mind that the 2500K needed a 40% overclock, and even then, there was still light stuttering every now and then. Additionally, a Core 2 Quad Q6700 I once tested is unplayable without a good overclock, and even then it matches a Sandy Bridge i3. Moral of the story, while higher clock speeds are good, more cores are better in games that utilize them, and for Destiny 2, don't bother with Core 2 Quads. Where it is a real relief though is with video editing, with only 4 cores, 4 threads, Sony Vegas occasionally becomes stuttery, even crashing frequently for every video I made. Now it's all buttery smooth, still with occasional freezes you know, for something heavy, but never resulting in a crash. And these are CPU rendering times for one of my old videos. While the 2600X's extra beef really helps in cutting down times, I'd still use my graphics card for that. And another use that can leverage more cores is with streaming. With Destiny 2 and OBS fired up streaming to YouTube, we do see a slight decrease in frame rates but isn't too bad. Though that's half the story. On the viewer side of this stream at 720p60, it's smooth enough even if the quality needs a bit more tweaking. And the 2500K is also holding up very well, but under the same streaming parameters on the viewer side, well, yeah, uh, dialing them down does certainly help. So is it a worthy upgrade from a 2500K? For the games I play right now, not really. A GPU and monitor upgrade would be more substantial, but then pre-Coffee Lake i5s are already becoming bottlenecks in these newer titles, so the only way is up. For productivity stuff though, it's an obvious improvement and for once I had a real genuine joy editing any video. So yeah, I had a good thrill chasing this shiny thing called Ryzen, though that thrill died pretty quickly and was replaced with what's possible with this much computing power. I can't wait. And I might be moving away from Intel, but not forever. Hopefully they'll get their act together and bring some competition within the DIY space. After all, my Wi-Fi card's made by Intel. A gesture that no matter where I go, I'll always be looking to the other side for a good deal. Yeah, so regardless of what you think of that B-Sod, um, <laughs> yeah, it is real. I did force it in my computer and I did it with a, um, basically a bunch of code or program called Not My Fault, uh, which was written by somebody in Microsoft. Uh, and you can simulate a load of things. This still isn't finished yet. What we need to do is to change the text on this into um, a system service exception. Okay, so we've opened up good old MS Paint. Oh yes, that is much better. <laughs> that and paint over it. Here we go. Bada bing, bada boom. System service exception. And basically, uh, select all of this. And then I think we press and hold Alt to remove. And clear. And we'll just save this basically as an overlay. So it's in this frame where um, this little thing appears. So let's just drag this in. Ah oh, crap. Okay, so I need to I, I need to mod this a bit. So uh, clear. And say up to here. And let's clear that. And just save really. And that should update itself. And yeah, it's it, this is now. Oh my gosh, that looks so real. Let's play that out. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I don't know. I just love the idea of you know doing one of these on a video. So yeah, um, thanks for hanging around. <laughs> See you soon. Uh, let's just repeat that again.